Hello everyone and welcome to Intuitive Art Mediums. Thank you for joining me for the Libra Full Moon Pick a Card Tarot Reading. Now this is a general tarot reading, so please only go with the messages that resonate with you. Now the full moon in Libra is also known as the pink moon or the hair moon. And this occurs on Saturday, April 16th at 2.55 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So please adjust to your time zone on the planet. Now during the week, you should be feeling really good about all that you've accomplished. And again, this is about balancing relationships. So here with pile one, we have a heart-shaped rose quartz. With pile two, we have a rose quartz wand. And with pile three, we have a rose quartz jewel. Okay, I will meet you over at your reading. Hello, Pile One. If you chose the rose quartz heart, welcome to your reading. Okay, now the Libra full moon is about balancing relationships. So we're going to check out your oracle cards and then we'll throw down some tarot and then we'll conclude it with a couple more oracle cards. Okay, so we start with the witch's familiars because we do have a special relationship with our familiars. And here for pile one, we have goat with potency. Okay, this is going to be a very potent and strong relationship. Okay, and then we have the yin yang of love. And here we have number 30 with falling in love. Okay, so for some of you, you could be falling in love with a goat, somebody who was born year of the goat. This could also indicate you being born year of the goat. This could also indicate a Capricorn, which is the sea goat. Okay, and then we have, because we do have Beltane coming up on May 1st, I wanted to include the Beltane Oracle because this is about relationships. Oh, nice. The Lovers with 42. Love lulls all sorrow and bewitches flesh, mind, and breath, reminding me that I am unafraid of the unfurling winds of my eternity. Wow. That's really beautiful with this falling in love and the lovers. That's really nice. And then because we have the full moon and we have these beautiful flowers that are beginning to bloom with the moon, I wanted to call upon the flowers of the night oracle. And here we have awareness with moonflower vine. Okay, now, it could be that the person that you're falling in love with is helping you to be more aware of yourself intimately, or you're helping each other to become more aware of each other intimately. Uh, more things are becoming awoken and alive within both of you. And with the awareness, this is also the awareness of your psychic abilities. So here we have also the divine feminine with the moonflower vine because we the moonflower is that divine feminine. And it's about dreams, healing, and intuition. So this can also be an awareness of the habits that you have, perhaps these are behaviors 
that are changing. You're aware of these changing behaviors that love is unfurling in your life. And this is a very potent love. Okay, let's get into your tarot now. And go a little bit deeper into this falling in love. Now, with this full moon in Libra, it could be that this is something that just happened. You both of you become suddenly aware that you have very strong feelings for each other. It could be that you, each of you or one of you declares your love for the other. start with oh nice the page of cups he is the poet he is the lover the the page of cups is about romance so this is going to be a very romantic time and then we have the queen of coins this is somebody who's very kind and giving very generous um probably an empath type person look the star oh this is this is the love of your dreams this is the love you've been wishing and hoping for and the queen of swords okay with the page of cups the page of cups is helping you to separate yourself from your doubts and fears that have to do with love, which also have to do with being vulnerable. And the Queen of Swords does not like being vulnerable. Uh, she's experienced loss. She's experienced separation. This is also a very independent woman. But this Page of Cups um, brings this childlike newness of love and it is the page of cups that is able to let the queen of swords be vulnerable emotionally then we have the chariot okay now this is someone or two people i should say who are very independent you have great respect for each other as a person. And it's because you allow each other to be who you are naturally is what brings you together, what makes your love so strong because the trust is so powerful. Neither of you want to hurt the other. And here's the Queen of Wands. Wow, you have three queens. The Queen of Wands is creativity. She's ruled by Leo, so she rules the heart. She's all about love. And here we have with the star. Okay, I feel that your love is going to be um, dramatic, not in a bad way but in a positive, romantic way. This is someone who wants to move you, who wants to really romance you in a way that you won't ever forget. This is like movie love. So if you feel like you're in a movie or in a play, that is the power of the Page of Cups because he is this poet who is able to move people with his words. And then we have a judgment. Okay, this is renewal. This is the springtime. Now for some of you, this could be somebody that is from a past relationship and you get back together and you rediscover and rekindle your love. You renew your love. Now for others, this could mean that you're renewing your vows, 
renewing your hand fasting, renewing your declaration of love for each other, strengthening those bonds, making them even more potent. And here with the emperor, you know, very powerful. You know, you two might be a power couple. Or you support each other in such a way where you make each other feel very powerful and independent. Here we have, um, this is ruled by Aries, the emperor is. And we still have the Aries sun during this full moon. So I think that could be important. Uh, for some of you, this could be an Aries person. Uh, and with the queens, we have, uh, with the queen of swords, we have an Aquarian type personality. With the queen of coins, we have a Capricorn type personality. And um, with the queen of wands, we have a Leo type personality. And it could, this could also be a fire sign. Uh, earth sign and the queen of swords could also be an air sign and with the page of cups he's ruled by pisces so that's a water sign so we have all four elements um, represented here and so this could be uh, somebody that you meet suddenly with the chariot um, you're on a journey and it's somebody that you meet and you just kind of click and you make each other feel powerful. Then we have the magician. Okay, this, remember I was saying this can be like movie love. You know, you feel like you're in a movie or a play and with the magician, you have the magic of love. Now, the Libra full moon, the pink moon, the hair moon, this could be an excellent time for you to do magic having to do with relationships. You know, because the star is about your hopes and wishes and your dreams. And the queen of wands is how you want to live your life with that love. And you want it to be magical. Okay, now let's check out a couple secrets from the witches to see what they may have to offer, what insight they may have to offer for this reading for pile one. And we have, oh, Sunwise Sorcery. There are times to go with the flow, and the witch can assure you this is one such time. Heed what seems to work with ease. Avoid the forced with difficult. Oh, avoid the forced and difficult. Walk the clear and open path. Okay. Yeah, follow your stars. Now, some of you may feel like this love is destined. It's written in the stars. Now, I would also check your astrology chart, your personal natal chart, along with the person that you're interested in to see if there is some astrological connections that bring you together. So you definitely want to go with the flow and you don't wanna force anything. Uh, and with magic, with the magician here, this could also be a warning. There's no need to uh, cast love spells where it's controlling the other person to fall in love with you because that will always backfire. Now, it's perfectly okay to do magic to help grow love, to attract the right kind of love or the kind of love that you wish to have, that you desire. And next we have, oh nice, the old ways. 
The old ways are sacred to witches who are reclaiming traditions thousands of years old. What are some of your ancient practices? The witch asks your memories to rise within you today. And this is quite nice with the judgment card here because it's about renewal. It's about that which was old, that which was dead, is now rising back up. Something that you may have wandered away from and now you're being called back to it. You're being called back to the old ways. And it's a very strong, potent pull for you. And I just got this, and so I wanted to share this with you. And I'll just draw one Practical Witches spell for you. we have healing spells and we have the elemental magic wind how beautiful is that because libra is an air sign okay so wind is a harbinger of change the west wind is especially potent for healing while the south wind is known to bring new beginnings you can carry this powerful instrument with you wherever you go by capturing the wind in a white cloth bag. While standing facing the wind, say this spell. Brother wind around us you blow, all that is sad in this life with you go. After the storm, I stand in the rain. I thank you now for all that I gain. With harm to none, this spell is begun. Tie the bag with a blue ribbon Whenever you see a situation that could use a change for the better, you can pour forth some of the winds of positive change. Okay, that's really nice. Okay, one last card for you from the Heart and Soul deck. Because some of you may be healing your relationships with yourself, falling in love, with yourself because you know it's very important to love yourself in order to attract the kind of love that you wish to bring into your life okay. here is your artwork i love the star because you also got the star card in this reading okay all is possible when your heartfelt vision is in alignment with your values. Believe in your dream, love it, breathe it, and let it fill your thoughts. But you must take action also. Work towards it a little each day until it becomes your primary action. Dreams are first envisaged, but then they must be built. You will succeed if you work at it. Okay, pile one, there is your reading. I hope that you found it helpful and beneficial. And until next time, take care. Hello, pile two. If you chose the rose quartz wand, welcome to your reading. Okay, we're first going to check out your oracle cards and then we'll throw down some tarot and go a little bit deeper. So let's get into your reading. First, we're going to check out the witches familiars because witches do have a special relationship with their familiars. And since the Libra full moon is about relationships, I felt that it was important to consult with this deck. So for you, pile two, oh, we have the ant cooperation. Now this is really interesting because the Libra full moon is also about cooperation between people. They, people tend to want to be more helpful during this time. So this could be about uh, 
partnerships, uh, relationships where cooperation, teamwork is essential. Okay, and then with your I Ching of love, we have friendship with number 58. Okay, so this could be, this reading could be primarily about friendships and the cooperation between friends. Okay, and because we do have the Libra full moon is about relationships and Beltane will be occurring on May 1st. I wanted to consult with the Beltane Oracle as well. And here we have growth with number 16. Inside myself, I've sown beauty with wounds, which speak of my immortality in the expanse of eternal song, softly bellowing in spirit. Okay, now this is growing from pain, grow, growing pains, uh, having that growth. Uh, the, the sown beauty with wounds, which speaks of my immortality. Now, if you think about Shakespeare, there are certain themes that run through those stories. And those same themes run through our lives. And you'll, you know, there's themes of love, betrayal, um, and other themes, which I can't think of right now. But there is growth in those times of sorrow. That's where we uh, get our wisdom. And this could be a friend who comes to you in that time of need to help cheer you up, to help remind you that uh, there's still something to work on, something to grow towards, and helping you to release the pain and heal your wounds. So I'm getting that this is a relationship where wounds are being healed with the power of love. And that love could be in the form of a friendship. Okay, now I want to consult with the Night Blooming Flowers Oracle because there are flowers that love to bloom during the full moon. And for you, we have balance with the chocolate flower. Now, this is so interesting. I just got my seeds for the chocolate flowers that I plan on planting this year. And uh, so this is about balance. Libra is about balance. Cooperation is about balance. It's about teamwork. Friendship is about balance. Okay, now with this wound here from the growth, it could be that uh, perhaps one of you hurt the other unknowingly or knowingly. Uh, it's going to be different for each of you. And you now feel bad about that or they feel bad about that and they want to bring balance they want to apologize they want to help you with whatever it is that you need help with okay and I also get the garden too here with the growth uh, working in your garden because as you dig the hole in a way you are wounding the earth digging that hole planting your seeds, what you've sown is what you're going to reap. Okay, let's get into the tarot and go a little bit deeper here. Queen of Swords. Okay, this is telling me that uh, somebody hurt somebody um, and they want to apologize. One of the nice things about the chocolate flower is that it releases this fragrance of chocolate. And chocolate, the smell of chocolate, releases the happy chemicals in our brains. So it makes us feel good. It makes us feel joyful. 
So I am getting the feeling here with the Queen of Swords that somebody hurt somebody else and they feel bad about it and they are trying to make up for that look with the Judgment card, uh, the renewal, the rebalance. Yeah, they, they want to be friends. They're reaching out to you. And here we have the Three of Cups celebration. Now this tells me that there is forgiveness and here with the growth there is that forgiveness and balance because we are all after we are after all all human beings we make mistakes we learn from that pain and we also learn from forgiveness it's important to be forgiven and with this judgment card there is forgiveness here and with that forgiveness, there is celebration. And I, because it's so close to Easter, I can't help but feel like this renewal, this rebirth, and the three cups, the three days. So there's something significant in that. And you'll know what it means because it'll mean something different to each of you. But there is this beautiful renewal. You know, I can't help but think of the Christ story of when Jesus was betrayed. Here's with the Queen of Swords, that betrayal. But that had to occur in order for his rebirth to occur. And that occurred three days after he was crucified. And there is that celebration. Then we have the King of Coins. Okay, this is a Taurus type personality. Um, and this could have something to do with a business relationship. This could be an old business partner. Then we have the Five of Pentacles. Okay, uh, I kind of get the feeling that there was a falling out between the two of you at some time, at some point, and it had to do with money. Perhaps a business was mismanaged, um, or perhaps things just didn't turn out. Things weren't as fruitful as you were hoping. Your idea didn't take off like you were hoping it would. And then with the Ace of Swords, you go back to the drawing board and you revise those plans. And that's where it's important to have this cooperation because it seems like that each of you have something to offer to the team, the cooperation here, that just like, the butterfly needs the flower and the flower needs the butterfly. There's this beautiful synergy between you two and you need each other for that success. I really get the feeling that this is more about business because we have these three pentacles here and it's friendship and cooperation. Okay, then we have the Nine of Pentacles. Yeah, when you come back from that drawing board, here we have the Three to the Nine. This is contentment. This is your bliss. This is uh, being content and happy uh, with the direction that you're going. So, both of you seem be very pleased about the direction that you are coming together in. Perhaps you needed some time apart and now you're coming back together because now you have renewed ideas, something that will adapt to these changing times. And here we have the Two of Pentacles. Uh, a new business venture, perhaps. Uh, here now we have uh, money coming in, even though some of it's still going out to support the business. There is this flow of income. 
And here we also have this flowing, you know, of the song softly bellowing in spirit. Then we have the tower. Okay, something is going to change. The truth is going to set you free. There is balance. Okay, and here we have the high priestess. Okay, some secret is going to be revealed. I'm going to draw one more card here. Okay, here we have the Six of Cups. This is nostalgia. This is something from the past. Something from the past is going to be revealed and healed. Okay, that's really nice. Okay, now let's check out what the secrets of the witches have to say. Okay, these two cards just flew out and I'm just looking for two cards. So Spirit wants these cards to be for you. Magical laws. Bide within the law you must. In perfect love and perfect trust. Live you must and let to live. Fairly take and fairly give. Today the witch brings you balance and harmony. Look at that balance. And I said something is going to be healed in this relationship. And here we have a black candle. Feel the energy. The witch lights her blessed black candle. Surrounded in salt and herbs for you. Farewell now to ill luck. All misfortune burns away in the flame of the witch's candle. Now for some of you... Burning this black candle in a dish of salt and herbs. Because we do have this Queen of Swords. This might be a ritual that will be ideal for you to heal that pain. Because there is something being healed here. And this black candle. Especially if you're able to do this together in burning the black candle. And obeying the magical laws. And I love that it came up with a high priestess. Because she is the keeper of those magical laws. Okay. And I thought it would be fun to draw a card from this deck. For a little more magic for this full moon in Libra. There is a healing of friendship here. Here we have house spells. And your spell is reclaiming your space ritual. In order to do any spell work, you must clear the clutter that can create an environment that is not conducive for magic. Banish the old, bad energy from your house by casting this spell. Make a tea from mint, preferably peppermint. Once it cools, dip your finger in the tea and sprinkle it throughout your home while reciting. This space is mine by will divine. May all the energy here be healed. And so it is by the magic sealed. What a beautiful spell to do with this black candle spell as well. You can combine the two to make it more powerful. Okay, one last card from the Heart and Soul deck. Okay, here is your artwork. And we have, your intuition constantly senses the voice of spirit and conveys this through emotion and feeling. Spirit's great love and wisdom continuously flows through you like a stream of soft diamond light. Stop for a moment and feel this beautiful flow of energy. Allow it to permeate every part of you. You and spirit are one 
entwined by invisible threads of love. That's beautiful. It goes so nice with this growth and friendship card um, because here you are, you know, through growing, through planting your seeds, you're tuning in with that voice of spirit. Here, the bellowing, the softly bellowing in spirit, the eternal song. And that song is your magic spell. That song is your spirit. That song is the threads of love that you sow beauty with wounds which speaks to you. So each of us have wounds that need to be healed. And I really feel that there is this deep healing. And with the stream of soft diamond light, that is the full moon. So during the full moon, it would be a good spell to do. You know, reclaiming your space in your home. You know, light the black candle first to remove negative energies. And as that black candle burns, sprinkle your home with the peppermint tea. Okay, pile number two. I hope that you enjoyed this reading and that it was helpful and beneficial. And until next time, take care. Hello, pile three. If you chose the jewel cut rose quartz, welcome to your reading. We will first check out your oracle cards and then we'll go deeper into the reading with some tarot and then we'll draw a few more oracle cards. So first we're going to look at the witches familiar because witches do have a special relationship with their familiars and familiars can be messengers. Okay, and for pile three, we have the raven, determination. Okay, this is telling me that my pile threes are very determined to accomplish something. And this is a great week for that because with this full moon in Libra energy, we're also feeling really good about the progress that we've made. And in that progress, we're able to balance our relationships. And those relationships can be with other people. They can be with ourselves. And again, they can be with our familiars. Okay, I also want to check out the I Ching of Love. What is changing there for you? And here we have number one with the creative desire. Okay, this is telling me that many of you in my pile three here are very determined to create something. I feel like many of you are artists or in the performing arts. You're in the creative uh, field. Uh, and creativity can occur even in technology, because it does take a creative mind and great determination to do that problem solving in the creation of whatever it is that you, you desire. Now with the full moon in Libra, we also have, you know, this balancing of relationships. We also have Beltane, uh, coming to us on May 1st. So I wanted to consult with the Beltane Oracle here. And for you, Pile 3, we have number 6 with creation. Through the darkness I crossed, and still I found myself in the presence of life. Okay, there is procreation here. Uh, for some of you, Having a child might have been a challenge for you, and you've been very determined in that process because you desire to have a child. Now, that's for not for everyone in Pile 3 because creation can also be a work of art, writing, whatever your creative talents and skills lie. Okay, and then because we do have the full moon, 
uh, I wanted to check out the flowers of the night oracle because there are certain flowers that love to bloom during the full moon. Okay, and for you, pile three, we have preserve with the silver ghost. Okay, this is about withdrawing into the self. Um, I, there's some isolation. There's meditation here. And, you know, so it's not like you're being rejected or anything like that. It's um, withdrawing into yourself to meditate. And perhaps for some of you, this is an idea that was something that you wanted to do years ago. Perhaps for some of you, uh, decades ago. And now you're in your meditations, it keeps rising up because it is determined. This creation, this seed that you planted within yourself with love is now also determined to grow. You've preserved it for a reason and now is the time to let it come forth. But because it's been such a long time, there's this gestation period where you're getting to know it again and see how it's evolved over that time period. Because perhaps, you know, the essential, the essence of your creativity is there. And now it's ready to flow somehow. Okay, let's... Oop, this card wanted to come out. It just flew out. We have the Emperor. Now, this is ruled by Aries, and we still have the Sun in Aries. And Aries is a very determined sign. It's Aries is also very good about uh, problem solving. It is also about the ego. I'm not saying that you have an inflated ego, but it is about preserving the self. And that's also what this card represents. You know, preserving yourself by taking care of yourself. So be determined. So maybe some of you are trying to get back in shape. It is springtime after all. Having this relationship with your body and you are determined to get back into sh into shape and taking better care of yourself, feeding your body better foods. Okay, let's continue to shuffle the tarot. Okay, we have the Queen of Swords. She has come up in the previous two readings as well. There is a separation. Uh, perhaps this is separating yourself, your new self from the old self. So, you know, this is also uh, reclaiming your divine feminine power. And here we have the world. I love it because here we have the tree impregnated with a human, the world. And the world represents accomplishment as well. So there is something that you're meant to bring forth into the world. And part of that progress is getting in shape, taking care of yourself because the silver ghost here is about taking care of yourself and you have this creative desire and sometimes when you are preparing for a part perhaps some of you are in the performing arts you have to uh, prepare yourself to exert a certain amount of energy in that creation in that creative process and that in itself is going to transform you. But with the emperor and the world here, there is something that you're meant to bring forth into the world. And here we have the four of wands. 
and this is ruled by um, a Leo sun. So this is about the happy harvest home. And here we have with Aries, the emperor. He is sitting, he's very pleased. He's very happy in his home. People feel welcomed. Those who come into his home feel welcomed, safe. It's a sanctuary. And then we have a judgment. Okay, this is renewal and rebirth, which is what spring is all about. And, uh, you know, with the Queen of Swords, I get that for some of you, after a separation or a loss, you come to terms with it and you are somehow healed. You're transformed, but you're healed. You're on a higher frequency now because you let something go, something that wasn't needed any longer. And here we have the Two of Wands, the initiation, the path of light into the world. There are going to be just follow the path of serendipity and uh, you can't go wrong. Follow the path of your light just as a plant grows towards the sun. You too are growing and following that light and that light is the love that is within you and it is determined to soar. Okay, the Queen of Cups. Okay, she is very secretive. So this is also telling me to keep this, um, what you're doing to yourself. You know, here we have the heart within, the womb within, keeping your secret to yourself until it's ready to bring it forth. Uh, because the Queen of Cups is about secrets. She's about intuition. She doesn't show her cards. She keeps them very close to her. So, and with the Emperor here, you know, don't let everybody know what your mind is. Just provide this welcoming feeling this happiness it's kind of like the king's court where people are welcomed to mingle and sometimes exchange and share their secrets but i have a feeling here it is it is a mystery because we have the judgment card here which is about rebirth and renewal and it is about the mysteries within just as love is a mystery no one can really explain love it just is. It happens. Look at this with the Ten of Cups. Okay, for those of you who are planning families, this Ten of Cups does represent that happy ever after, that uh, bliss in family, in togetherness. But if this is a journey of the self, because we do have that strongly speaking here in this reading, uh, of the three readings, this reading focuses the most on the relationship to self and balancing that relationship with yourself. And by following your bliss, look at this, you go from the queen of swords, the sadness, the sorrow, you embrace that. It's part of the progress, you know, just with the judgment you know, which is much like the journey of Christ, you know, he was crucified and then he was reborn. There was pain and then he was healed. And this 10 of cups shows that healing and you're now vibrating at a higher frequency because you have embraced this initiation. You've been welcomed into this path 
of higher light. And then we have the five of swords. Okay, this can be a power struggle. Um, this could be the ending of those power struggles because you've withdrawn from yourself. You've withdrawn from these people, the people who want to struggle after power and position. You've let that go. And in the Five of Swords, it's it's someone who, you know, has the swords and two people are walking away. You know, perhaps one of the people that are walking are away is someone who's like, I'm tired of this game. I'm going to let the next person that challenges me have this position. Because only through defending that position constantly... You know, because when you're the champion, everybody wants to challenge you. Everybody wants to better you. Everybody wants to bring you down. And sometimes it's better to just, fine, you have it. I'm tired of this game. And you walk away from that. And you've preserved yourself. You've preserved your power. Look at this just for a confirmation the Six of Wands, Victory. One more. The Knight of Swords. With that victory, your path is clear. This is another confirmation of once you are initiated through this Two of Wands, you are welcomed. You learn these mysteries of power and you realize that it's not something that you have to fight for. That's the victory. You can walk away from that game because now you have a new path to follow. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see what... Uh, I just want to draw one card from here. This look like a fun deck to play with since we do have the full moon and it's always fun to do magic on the full moon. And the full moon is about something being completed and that's what you're walking away from, that power struggle. Okay, and you have the healing spells. Okay, hey, skin preserving potion. How funny because here we have the preserve card here. And the preserve card is about taking care of yourself, preserving yourself. Okay, this is this is beautiful. Okay, there is a reason many witches appear ageless. They take good care of their skin and heighten the health of their complexion with a Venusian prescription for eternal youth. Combine these oils, two ounces of sweet almond, two drops of clary sage, two drops of chamomile, and two drops of myrrh, rosemary, and geranium each. And before you anoint your skin each night, utter this spell. Goddess of love, goddess of light, hear this prayer. Your youth and beauty eternal, please share. So mote it be. And rub the potion on your face and rinse off for healthy skin and radiant glow. Okay. Now let's go a little bit further with the secrets of the witch and see what kind of magic. Okay, these two cards flew out. In the last pile, the two uh, secrets from the witches flew out as well. So, Spirit wants you to have these cards, pile three. Oh, actually, you get three cards. Okay. There's a hidden one. That's Queen of Cups. Okay, Hail the Crone. Witches revere every age. You will be maiden, mother, and crone. All of them, queens to honor and respect. The witch wants you to know you are perfect at this moment in your precious life. How beautiful with that. You are perfect in this moment. 
You are surrounded in this love. You've been preserved. And of course, we have the Ageless Skin Remedy here, potion for you. Okay, next we have the Coven. A witch sometimes works with a coven every full moon to raise energy. The witch now sends an etheric magical support group. They will gather about you celebrating your dreams and wishes. This is beautiful because we have the crown, which is the dark moon, and then we have the coven with the full moon. Okay, and then we have divine magic in between. You are a part of nature, an embodiment of the divine in human form, and your humanity is sacred. Know you were born of Mother Earth, that you belong here, and she embraces you. You will return to her and transform once again. This picture, perfect. What a beautiful affirmation of the divine magic that you are. And that is in that Queen of Cups. She is the intuitive one. She is the knower of secrets. In many ways, she is much like the High Priestess card. Okay, Pile 3, one last card from the Heart and Soul. Here is your artwork. And sometimes the true purpose of things is hidden from view. That's that Queen of Cups. Something doesn't quite make sense at the moment, but it soon will. All is about to change. A blessing is on its way and many more will follow. Soon you will feel as though it's raining rose petals from heaven. Wow, because we have that six of wands, that victory coming off of the five of swords because you walked away from something and you did so intuitively with that queen of cups. It doesn't make sense. It just felt like the right thing to do. That is the divine magic for you. Okay, pile three, I'm going to end your reading here. This was a really amazing reading. So until next time, take care.